Hello, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here in New York City. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. The AWS Summit, a big event. It's part of their summit program, but the New York City is a big one because concentration of FinTech, a lot of customers here. New York City is the epicenter, one of the hot cities for generative AI. And we've got a great guest here, Rowan Karmakar, who's director of AWS Product Partner Technology. He also runs the Gen AI Competency Program. Rohan, great to see you. Thanks for coming on the, the pop-up cube here in New York yeah, City. Thanks for coming Great to be on. here, thanks, John. Um, I'm really interested in what you're doing because we're seeing a trend, obviously with Generative AI, we've been covering theCUBE and SiliconANGLE and theCUBE research um, like it's nobody's business. But the, the thing that's happening now is production workloads are hitting the scene and teams are being enabled across all the enterprises in the world, in their departments, getting budget for Gen AI. And there's kind of a, um, you see this with new markets, is that there's a vibe of, I got to get a design center together, we need to get some core competency, we got to understand what our philosophy is, we got to get intrinsic foundational things in place to go for this next generation shift. You, you are a big part of the competency program on AWS that actually starts validating those partners and production workloads for AWS as people start to make these bets. That is the program. Can you explain, yeah. well that's my version of it, but <laughs> when you tell us what the program is and why it exists and what does it do? Yeah, uh, no, happy to share that. Uh, Gen AI, uh, you know, has been, as you said, uh, forefront of uh, a lot of customers' mind. They're leaning in and they are trying to figure out how to like use uh, Gen AI at scale within their enterprises. And this is where uh, they, they lean towards partners to help them uh, build strategy, build uh, a lot of like uh, business cases uh, and ROI metrics, as well as implementation. And uh, they look at partners to provide both, uh, you know, software solutions as well as industry solutions. So what we have done with the competency program, Gen AI competency program, is uh, help customers identify such partners. So this is a program which uh, goes through a rigorous uh, technical validation uh, where the partners uh, uh, submit various capabilities around uh, Amazon Gen AI technologies like Bedrock, Sa Amazon SageMaker, Inferentia, Cranium, as well as Q. And not only do they prove the technical expertise, but they also have proven customer success where each of the competency partners submits four production ready uh, case studies, uh, customer case studies, to be a part of the competency. So it's a, it's a very select list of partners. Okay, so just, let me just back up for a second. Yeah. It's going a little fast for me, a little slow this morning. Yes. So is the general AI competence program for end user customers or is it designed for partners so, or both? So partners are part of the competency program okay. and the customers typically look at the competency partners and select the partners for their Gen AI So you're really serving, you're the kind of brokering to the par end yeah. user customer. Correct the big enterprise trying to figure out their world yes. and then give them a market basket of partners yes. that have kind of been vetted. That, is, that have been validated, validated and, and pro vetted. and track record. Okay, let's dig into that. What, yeah. what does it take to be competent in, in the AI side right now? Uh, so, uh, like I said, there are many areas, right? Uh, like starting from consulting, strategy, software solutions, right? Uh, training is very important. Um, you know, um, many of our partners are retraining their workforce to be more in AI enabled. Employee training, not yeah. data. Training. Yes. <laughs> Let's be, Let's be yes. specific. There's a lot of training going yeah. on there, but and inference, but yeah. you're talking about skill development. Skill development. That's correct. As well as, uh, like I said, uh, these partners have uh, uh, you know done production ready implementations mm -hmm. and uh, customer references. So so they know uh, they have a lot of industry insights and domain expertise to drive Gen AI at scale. Uh, you know for customers. So that's that's what it takes. Uh, you know to be a competency partner. And today we are also announcing uh, an expanded cohort, we are identifying 19 more partners to be part of this program, so it uh, takes the total. That's being announced here in New York City. In New York City New today. New cohort, 19 new partners. partners. So it takes a total competency partners to around 60 mm -hmm. plus, uh, and we are also expanding the offerings to Korea, Greater China, uh, Latin America, as well as Middle East. Uh, okay, so you're expanding that. So well, let me just back up, the current 60. U.S., North America, or is that it's global? So it is global. Okay. Yes. Is there a trend you're seeing? Is there categories that are emerging faster than others, or is it horizontal in terms of a category perspective? Uh, it's it's both. Uh, it's uh, you know uh, so the type of partners in this competency are uh, both ISVs as well as consulting partners, consulting as well as uh, you know model providers, and uh, you know uh, uh, consulting partners have also got various industry solutions in there and strategy consulting capabilities as well. So it's a pretty broad set of uh, cohort of partners. All are marketplace participants. Most of them Most are marketplace. Okay. It's not a requirement. 
No, it's not a requirement. So I'm a partner, so take me through the, 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 the life cycle, the day in the life. I, I'm, hey, I'm a partner, I want to be, I want to get in on the action. And of yes. course, there's probably some benefits from a sales enablement standpoint, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, so how do I, take me through the process, and coach me through, what do I do? Yeah, uh, see, uh, like typically partners are setting up a Gen AI center of excellence within their organization, right? Uh, so uh, what we, uh, we, we've got our own Gen AI center of uh, excellence, which helps partners to develop the necessary capability that they need need uh, you know to become a competency partner so we help them uh, get to that stage and then as they are getting to that stage and driving customer engagements uh, they get to be the competency partner so it, it's yeah. a it's a typical uh, you know ramp that the partners get into and and then eventually be the competency partner you know when I used to go to Disney as a kid I used to want to go on the big ride and it's yeah. gonna be this tall to ride yeah. the roller coaster or the <laughs> or, you know ma magic mountain what is the bar to, to get on this program I mean what is that long is there, what do people need to know? Is there, you got to have production workloads? Is there a filter? What's the, how tall do you need to be to ride the competency program? Yeah, the bar's pretty high, right? Uh, obviously, uh, you know, partners need to demonstrate the technical expertise mm -hmm. uh, around the AWS Gen AI services, as well as uh, customer success. Uh, I think customer success is critical for, for us, uh, you know. As you know, there's a lot of uh, kind of experimentation and testing and POCs happening as well. So we want partners to uh, really uh, uh, be experts in, in driving those production ready case studies. In fact, uh, a couple of competency partners like Kalent and Loka, we've seen mm -hmm. seen them now uh, advise customers to bypass the POC stage and build uh, directly for production ready use cases. So that's one of the mm -hmm. kind of uh, trends that we have seen uh, starting mm -hmm. to happen. So that's one of the uh, yeah. you know high bars of the These competency. These are builders. <laughs> yes. As Andy yeah. Jassy used to say. Uh, yeah. um, let me ask you a question. So, so just they have the product or solution Yes. In market. And capabilities. With, and capabilities, meaning yeah. professional services. Professional so services. So product and services. Yes. With customers. In Correct. production. Correct. Not beta. Not beta. That's Not, the filter. That's the filter. Okay, got it. And then there's some other price objective things. Yes. All right, so how's it going right now? What is the highlight? What's the coolest thing you've seen? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, like I said, uh, you know, uh, there is a lot of good and broad use cases that we are seeing, right, mm -hmm. uh, with the customers. So, uh, you know, it's not just about the uh, low-hanging fruit, which which is the chatbots, which I call, right? Yeah. It, it's about really... I, mean, I want to roll my eyes right here, <laughs> chatbot one more time. They're agents now. Yeah, <laughs> yes, so it, it's, it's really more, you know, integrating these technologies into applications and their business processes. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what uh, the, the uh, you know, the partners are driving today. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, to give you another example, like, uh, uh, you know, low that I was talking about, they work with therapy brands uh, who build a, a transcription subscription service for mental, uh, mental health care professionals, right? Mm -hmm. So using that service, uh, you know, they, they use Bedrock, they train their models to uh, understand the nuance of that particular industry. Mm -hmm. And then uh, using that uh, particular customized model, they are building, uh, they are building this, this service which now can generate case summaries and save time of the therapist in, in this less administrative task and, and focus more on patient care, right? So this is uh, one of the examples where we, like I said, the, the industry solutions, the applications are really becoming high value and high impact. Okay, so the news here in New York City for this event is the new cohort that's global. Give us the hard news, what's the news? Uh, so, 90 new partners been added to this uh, competency program today. Uh, that takes the total to 60 plus partners globally. And with these 19 uh, partners, uh, some of the new partners we are adding are C3.ai, Cognizant, and IBM, and a few others uh, in, in Korea, Greater China, LATAM, and, and Middle East. IBM's been a big program partner of you guys yes. lately, the last two years. I, you guys have really kind of done deep with IBM. Obviously, they, they get yes. a lot of production workloads. Yeah. How's and it going with IBM? No, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been pretty awesome, right? Uh, they're working both on the software side with us, uh, you know, uh, migrating a lot of their software products on AWS as well as the marketplace, as well as they're doubling down with us on their professional services and, and uh, Watson governance and Watson data, right? So there's a lot of collaboration happening between the two companies. You know, just talking with Mona Chata, who's um, been director of Infrastructure Partners, um, and Rob Stretching on the Cube Research team, and I have been talking about this too in our research, is that we're moving Moving from a bolt-on to integration, where value, as mm -hmm. you look at these marketplaces in general, not just yours, but like people who are working with each other, 85% of the internet is connected with APIs. 
Generative AI is going to be the new wave that's going to change the data landscape as well as infrastructure capabilities. Mm -hmm. And integration is becoming now a new important engineering feature of partnering. Not just, hey, let's do a deal yep. and we share some data through an API. We're talking about really joint engineering, partnering. This is kind of where the competency program, at least I see it going where I can, as I'm building, the bridge to the future, use that metaphor, I'm going to have suppliers. I'm going to have a general yep. contractor, I'm going to have a major power source, maybe it's AWS, maybe I have some on-prem, maybe I got some edge. So I'm looking at a distributed computing paradigm. Integration, the most important thing. How is that showing up on your competency uh, data screen? Are you seeing that as a big factor as people look for, I guess, vetted solutions? Ver verified, check box, blue check mark. I mean, what do you, I mean, like, that's what you're doing. You're, yeah. you're verifying. Yeah, it is, you know. it is. And uh, yeah. you know, uh, is like you said. integration a big part of that? Integration is a big part of it. Co-innovation is a big part of it as well, right? Uh, another uh, big news today is uh, us and Deloitte uh, extending our collaboration agreement uh, on data and AI, uh, right? And and this is this is uh, investment, which again yeah. is about integrating <laughs> our services into in their industry solutions, as well as setting up a co-innovation lab to drive the next gen adoption of technologies, right? Which, which includes automatic, uh, autom autonomous robot robotics, as well as quantum ML and a few other areas. So it's also, you know, <laughs> a doubling down on integrations for today, as well as innovating for the future. I was talking to my other journalists and analysts, and I'm saying there's a Deloitte Love Fest this week here in New York City with uh, AWS, a big announcement. Talk about that Deloitte relationship, because that's important, and Mona kind of teased it a little bit about it, but that's a competency center that they're building. Yes. with AWS. Yeah. Or so, is it a competency center or is it more of a showcase design center? What, just explain the Deloitte. Sure, thing. so Deloitte's one of our uh, launch, was one of our launch partners for the Gen AI competency. When we launched the Gen AI competency uh, around 18 months back. Uh, then now they're doubling down and they are uh, going to drive a uh, few things, right? The one is uh, really building uh, the industry solutions uh, and, and going to market with those industry solutions that are production ready. Mm -hmm. That's one part of the uh, you know uh, strategic collaboration agreement. The other part is building an innovation lab uh, which in, uh, which includes uh, resources both from AWS as well as Deloitte. It's co-funded um, mm -hmm. innovation lab that will help uh, help uh, prototype and incubate technologies of the future, right? So it, it's it's like also what? like, uh, what? like uh, quantum ML is is one example. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are also looking at automotive uh, robotics uh, is another example, right? So the few areas that we are exploring together, uh, as well as uh, you know, like I said, uh, helping customers who are ready to. Mm -hmm adopt Gen AI at scale, right? The fun part about AWS, in, in, I mean, we are, we're a customer, a small customer, yeah. a small language model. With the cube, everyone knows that. Um, the, is that you guys enable so much, and, I, and it's fun to watch partners like Deloitte who jump in and, and go all in and yeah. do innovate with you guys. Um, but I've noticed it creates, when, when this happens before, it's happened before many times, we've seen this movie before, S3, EC2, and the higher level services came out. You saw a lot of innovation. Um, then there's a domino effect. You know, then you see other people come on. Has you, has the other partners been leaning into this? Can you share what the other GSIs or big integration partners, because they're leading the field right now in terms of most activity we see. A lot of those partners are, are putting together solutions for customers. They're engineering shops, not just consultants. Yeah. They're actually doing a lot of good work. So outside of Deloitte, who's jumping on, the, on into, yeah. the, into, the, uh, into the mix? Uh, I mean, uh, there, there are many GSIs there, right? Like uh, I just mentioned Cognizant and IBM are part of the uh, competency now. Accenture has been part of that competency since launch, uh, you know, uh, as well as uh, TCS and Infosys, like these are all leaning in and everybody is kind of taking a view of, uh, uh, they, they are engaging with the customer to understand, hey, what is the problem you're trying to solve, <laughs> right? Uh, and and they're not, it's not a technology-led conversation, it's a business outcome-led yeah. conversation, right? What is the problem you're trying to solve? And then how can this technology help that, yeah. uh, help solve that particular problem? So they're leading it more from the business and industry side, which is really being more impactful mm -hmm. uh, because they are, they are now picking the use cases which give the right ROI to the customer, right? It's it's not <laughs> always the low hanging fruit or the uh, you know the the hobby projects, right? Yeah. That you, you tend to do. Right. It's it's a value project. A lot projects. of product engineering going on. Yes, a lot more product engineering. Are you seeing the same thing? Yes, a lot more product engineering. A lot more uh, you know. Uh, like uh, for for customers, they're trying to kind of understand: Do they need to set up a platform 
you know, uh, that can help drive Jenny at mm -hmm. scale, right? Which has the right security yeah. controls, the right governance, the right uh, responsible AI development, um, you know, controls and framework that are suitable for the organization. So a lot of these mm -hmm. kind of building blocks have been built right now, and then different teams within the customer can leverage these technologies in various applications. All right, Robin, final question for you. Um, summarize the news and, and a position of, of the competency program. Again, congratulations, I think this is well needed. The market needs to get this done. What is it about, how do people get involved? Give a plug for the program. Yeah, uh, a couple of things, right? Like uh, we have the Gen AI Innovation Center which helps partners to develop capabilities. And that capabilities, as the partners develop, they can be a competency partner. And uh, like I mentioned, 60 plus competency partners today. And uh, a recent Canalyst survey kind of uh, showed that AWS specialization program, right, the competency program, 87% of the customers uh, consider it as a top three priority for them to look at competency before selecting a, a partner for a project. So this is super important for customers, super important for partners to differentiate themselves with this competency. It's a go global program with 60 plus partners. Yeah. Uh, super excited to be part of that uh, well, we, journey. We, we uh, commend you and of course theqresearch.com, check it out. We have been identifying, and this validates your piece that you're seeing storage, networking, and compute, changing significantly the characteristics of how to use those resources when you're using generative AI applications, uh, which then points to the next layer of uh, up, which is the data and all those higher level services. So cloud as we know it is going next level. This is what's <laughs> happening. I mean, that's what's, I mean, that's it's, the story. It's, it's AI anyway. It's, yes. it's Gen AI, it's next <laughs> yeah. level. It's legit next level. Uh, Rohan, thank you for coming on theCUBE. No, thank you. We for appreciate for your time. Me. I'm John Furrier here on theCUBE. theCUBE next level here at NYC is Gen AI. It's all the action here in New York City. They do us. I'm John Furrier. We'll be back after this break. <laughs>